Now joining us, good friend of the show, Ryan Paul, for this very exciting news about the CPKC Women's Open. Ryan, what makes Mississauga Golf and Country Club a great host for the 2025 CPKC Women's Open? Yeah, and uh, thanks for having me on, Adam. I uh, we're we're really excited about Mississauga for 2025. It really it, it checks all the boxes, and for us to be back in Ontario. Um, is is great to be in the GTA uh, for the first time since uh, 2019. We're at Magna and really south of the 401 um, for the first time since like the 90s uh, when we were at Glen Abbey is uh, is awesome and really to bring uh, the women's game to um, to the GTA again. We know we'll drive a lot of crowd, but Mississauga as a facility is is really perfect for this event. It's uh, it's beautiful. It's majestic. It's got uh, it's got some exciting holes. It's going to be a great uh, championship course for us and. Then the property itself has so much room for all the infrastructure that that we need to build on the golf course uh, that you guys have seen over the the past few years, and then operationally for the TV compounds, their parking lot is is massive. So it's it really has everything that we need to to run a successful event, and um, most importantly, a, a supportive membership who's excited uh, to be hosting, and and the city of Mississauga and and uh, visit Mississauga that's been um, behind us uh, since the beginning. So it's been great. Now, how long has this been in the works talks with Mississauga? Yeah, we usually um, we're looking two to three years ahead um, as we're we're planning out future venues. So we've been talking with uh, the city of Mississauga for quite some time on what a professional championship looks like uh, in the city of Mississauga. And then um, talking with a lot of those clubs in Mississauga and certainly Mississauga Golf and Country Club for um, for the better part of last year uh, in, in what this event um, could be. And we even had site visits back into pre-pandemic uh trying to figure out how to make it work so it's been uh, it's been a long time coming and really excited that yesterday we were finally able to uh officially announce now the past couple of years we've seen some great fields at the cpkc women's open and you spoke about this a little bit but expand if you don't mind you're back in the gta for the third time since 2001 just how exciting is it for that for the best on the lpga tour to be here in a huge market in the greater toronto area yeah, it's um, the the few messages that we've got already since uh, since announcing it's it's really exciting and to be in uh, the GTA and and Toronto and that close to downtown is uh, is certainly exciting. I know there are going to be a lot of uh, players going to the CN Tower and and visiting Toronto and all the all the great attractions that are that are there. And really, from the way that the twenty twenty five schedule is shaping up as well, uh, when you look at before and ahead, there would be a week off before our event. So hopefully we can see some players come in, spend some time in in Toronto uh, and Mississauga before the event. And then the week after uh, is the new FM Global Championship in Boston. So a nice uh, a nice little trip from Toronto to Boston with a, uh, a swing of two great championships. Oh, that's amazing to hear. And speaking of amazing, there is a great cause involved here. The CPKC Has Heart campaign. Tell our audience a little about that. Yeah, and this is uh, this is really the core pillar uh, for CPKC, our title sponsor of um, title sponsoring uh, our event and really the driver as to why we bring this championship across the country is to make a positive impact in all Canadian markets and really driving that with a substantial donation to uh, local children's hospitals in the markets that we play. Uh, we haven't named a beneficiary yet for 2025, but uh, since 2014, when CPKC has been uh, the title sponsor, over $20 million has been raised for local children's hospitals across Canada. And uh, to be back in the in the GTA and and to make a substantial donation again will be will be great. We were just about $3.5 million was raised uh, for the BC Children's Hospital and hospitals in the Vancouver area uh, in 2023 when we were at Shaughnessy. Oh, that is so amazing to hear. So that's 2025. But how about a little later this year, July 23rd to 28th at Earl Grey Golf Club in Calgary? I understand you're in Calgary right now. How are early preparations going yeah. for that? Well, today's preparations are uh, maybe a little less than ideal. Uh, if I turn my computer around, you'd see a blizzard uh, outside. <laughs> so our site visit's been uh, been tampered a little bit with, but uh, preparations have been going incredible. This golf club has been uh, remarkable. The city of Calgary has been remarkable. We are uh, near full registrations for volunteers already. Uh, that would be a tournament record for us. Our corporate sales have been uh, through the roof. This is going to be record breaking for us this year. And the club has been been nothing but supportive and excited uh, along with the whole community. Uh, coming off back to the back tournament of the years uh, in 2023 and 2022, we're uh, excited to uh, 
to announce uh, in the coming months some some new initiatives that we're going to be uh, launching and and hopefully go for that three peat. Okay, going for the three peat for the LPGA's tournament of the year. What's your secret, man? That's awesome to have that back to back years. The the uh, the secret and really it's it's not so much a secret, but it's the partners that we have that are uh, making that difference and really going uh, above and beyond to to make this tournament special. And when you look at uh, some of those award winning activations that we've been doing, CPKC certainly uh, putting their fan zones and uh, family zones all over the place. Uh, all the other public viewing structures, Levelware with their Caddy Lounge, uh, the Hilton Hotel that we had done in 2022. The, the list goes on and on, and uh, we have a few more that we're in the works with now, and um, we're going to make it hard on the LPGA not to not to select this for a third time. Yeah, absolutely. But just for you overall, for you all the volunteers, the committee, etc., just what's, what's the significance of being recognized in that amazing way back-to-back years by the LPGA? It's, uh, it, it's amazing, and it really it goes back and – to the volunteers, to the co- to the host clubs that we do, to the fans and and the communities that um, you know we're not just coming in and um, running a quick golf tournament and then we're and then we're gone. We're we're making a difference in the community, certainly with the charities and those donations, and to share this award with everyone who's who's part of the event, from spectators to staff to to fans and partners. It's uh, it's it's really great, and it it just helps us continue to build and and want to be better and keep putting on great events. Yeah, that's certainly awesome to hear. Now, before we wrap, yes, we're in March, but the tournament, this year's tournament is in July for anyone watching, listening from coast to coast. How do they find more information, tickets, that sort of thing? Yeah, we have our full list of tickets on sale, still volunteer uh, positions, like I mentioned. So you can find all of that at cpkcwomensopen.com. Awesome, Ryan. Well, hey, it's an exciting time ahead here. The CPKC Women's Open, both in 2024 and the latest announcement in 2025. Thanks for your time today. Thanks for having me.